So I'm now going to talk about weighted sums and how to compute them via matrix multiplication. So imagine we've got n elements of a weighted sum, right? So we've got data value x1 multiplied by weight w1 plus data value x2 multiplied by weight w2 and so on up to xn multiplied by wn. Now we can write that much more compactly than writing out all the values because if we had to do that for massive numbers of um, a very, very large value of n and we actually evaluate, uh, wrote all the terms down, this would go on and take up a lot of space. It's much easier to write it in this sum notation, which you'll see quite often, um, especially in the, some of the older literature on neural networks. But you'll see this basically means we've got a sum and across the following elements between uh, what the j is going to be the index between 1 and n, and we just write the index on, um, on the weight and the index on um, the data. And we basically just go through for each value of n going up in steps of 1, so w1 times x1 plus w2 times x2 all the way up to wn times xn, just like we, we had above, but it's more compact. However, it's still even nicer, in my opinion, and much more elegant to write it as a matrix multiplication. So rather than writing it in terms of each element like this, what we can do is we can build a vector. So we can build a vector of the weights, and this is, as you can see, here's a row vector. In this case, it's going to be one row um, by n columns. And then we can um, put all the all the x data into an x vector. In this case, it's going to be a column vector. So we've got the x1, x2, and so on, going all the way up to xn. And because of the way uh, matrix multiplication works, what we'll do is it's always rows by columns. So what we do is we multiply first element in, the, in, in, in W with the first element in X and add it to multiplying the second element in W with the second element in X and so on all the way up to WN times XN. Okay, so we end up with basically doing a sum, um, a weighted sum, just like we did previously. Um, and we can write that in, in simplified terms as WX where Basically, W is the weight vector, and X is the data vector. Now, just notice at this particular point, we've, we've chosen here that this is a network, obviously, with one output, because we just have a single value coming out. So, um, first of all, um, consequently, that the sizes of these things are going to be as follows in this particular example. Um, but we have, in this case, um, a vector, which is a 1 by n matrix. This vector is an n by 1 matrix, and consequently the output's got to be a 1 by 1. So the general rule is, when you're multiplying matrices together, the, the ones that actually are adjacent to each other have to be the same. So n here has got to be, has got to be an n here. And the outside ones of a, of a product of two like this give you the overall dimensionality of the result. So this will give us a, a 1 times n multiplied by an n times 1, which means overall we're going to get a 1 by 1. So we'll get a single value from this. So we often compute these weighted sums for, for example, building networks. And that's one of the reasons we're particularly interested in doing this. In this case, we've got a network with two inputs and two weights. And the output of this network is going to be the weighted sum of the inputs. So it's going to be, um, the output's going to be W1 times X1 plus W2 times X2. And that's exactly what we have previously and again we can write that as a sum in this case there's just two elements but even more elegantly let's write it as a matrix multiplication in this case it's just a um, this simple one by two so it's rows by columns one row by two columns multiplied by um, two rows by one column this is a two by one so the output's going to be again wx where in this case the w is just the two weight uh, weight values, and in this case, the x vector is just the two data points. Now we note, notice that if we calculate wx um, and we expand that out for these, this particular example, we see w here is in front of um, basically is a row vector, and it's multiplying with this column vector, which is full of the data. What we can also do, if we want to, is we could transpose 
both of these of, of these vectors and switch the order on and get uh, over and get exactly the same result. So if we transpose x, then what we had as a column vector becomes a row vector, and we transpose w, what was um, a row vector becomes a um, becomes a column vector. So if you look at the actual result of this, then obviously we do have to swap the order over because we still want a one by one output. So we have to, if we transpose the individual um, vectors, we have to ch change the order as well in order to get the same result. But we see we do get the same result because it's still um, x1 times um, w1 plus x2 times w2 and xn times wn. Obviously the order that w1 times x1 is exactly the same as x1 times w1, so we get the same value. So in general what we're going to see is a times b where a and b are matrices transposed is the same as b transposed times a transpose. And this is not a general proof, this is just really to illustrate that that is the case and you can see um, why these things are. And quite often with matrix manipulations, you know, some of the things, some of these results might seem a little bit bizarre to you, um, but there's a very simple way of looking at what actually the, you know, what do they mean? Because you can always expand it out and then look at it from first principles. What's it doing with the elements and what do you know about simple things like multiplication and addition? Um, and doing that, you can you can immediately see, yes, that Wx is the same as x transpose w transpose. Okay, another thing we come across quite a lot um, is um, sums of squared values, right? So we're going to calculate differences of, for example, um, data from its predicted value. And that's something we've already done in linear regression and we'll end up doing also um, with neural networks because it's a very similar thing. So in this case, we've got the error represented by the sum of squared values of, it could be y value 1, take away its predicted value of y value 1 squared, plus y value 2, take away the predicted value of y value 2 squared, and so on. And we can, again, we can write this as a sum, can't we? Because it's we're just basically just adding all these things together, but the thing that's actually being added together now has actually got a sum term in it. So now we're summing across n um, values. So we go up in steps of, of 1, between 1, 2, 3, 4, up, all the way up to n. It's y minus y hat squared. But we can still do this as a matrix multiplication um, if we just bear in mind that all we have to do um, in order to calculate this, this, um, this y take away y hat term, we can put things in vectors, so the y's can all go in a vector and the y hat's going to go in a vector. In order to get the squared effect, what we then need to do is multiply y minus y hat transposed with y minus y hat, where y then, of course, is, in this case, um, all of the, uh, the y values and y hat is the, is the y hat values.